everybody, and thank you for joining us. My name is Caleb. I'll be hosting this series of Let's Plays. I do programming and social media stuff at Rogue Raven. I'm also joined by Brendan, the creative director at Rogue Raven. Hello there. And Ryan, the lead technical director at Rogue Raven. Hi, guys. And so we're playing the original Clock Tower here. Now, this was released on the F Super Famicom in Japan. And it's seen some like ports to um, you know PlayStation 3, I believe, uh, and the Wii, but it's never seen an official release outside of Japan. So we're actually going to be playing this on an emulator, and we're using a fan-translated patch to play through it. So um, there's a lot of exciting, interesting things going on in this game, and uh, I think I think you guys will actually like it. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump right into it. All right, sounds like fun. So, we're probably going to, yeah, we're going to skip this cutscene. <laughs> we actually cannot skip the cutscene. Good to know. <laughs> but, uh... Those were good times. Yeah, right? A lot of lore happening here. <laughs> <laughs> it was a deep September. But the, the, basic, the basic premise of the game is that, uh... The main character, Jennifer, and three other girls are, you know, going to an orphanage on their first day. Um, and bad things begin to happen. Uh, Apparently so, Laura's slow as fuck. Yep. You always gotta have one lollygagger. Um, yeah, it's like heavily... Uh, anybody who's like familiar with uh, Dario Argento's uh, Phenomena... Uh, probably like recognize a lot of like similarities in the plot from that with this you know, it's about a bunch of girls in an orphanage who all get like slowly murdered by a uh, a spooky killer <laughs> spooky what makes it spooky they're almost there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can see see for yourself See? I don't know if you guys were reading any of the text, but there's some great translation going on there. I don't know if I could see it, though. Oh, I'm digging the graphics. There was a time. And these are actually, I think this is like the height of the, uh, the Super Nintendo, too, because this was 95... So yeah, this is exactly. Probably one of the last one of the last series of games like released. They're just hanging out, I guess, you know. Yeah, they're just chilling. <laughs> um so yeah, the the mechanics of the game are pretty simple. You um you have this like 2D plane right here that you move. So you only move left and right. And then occasionally to interact with things in the background, your character will like move up towards them. That helps out. Yeah, totally. Yeah, everybody's just kind of hanging this? out. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask what engine this was on. I think it was Unreal Engine 3, right? Yeah, uh, it's early beta version. Yeah. Those guys are pretty cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think that, like, nowadays, like, you know, the soundscape of anything is, like, so busy. And this game is almost entirely just, like, the walking sound. And that's it. Really? There's no ambient tracks? I mean, when you um, when we eventually get to the uh, the killer that shows up and he's mm -hmm. chasing you, you'll have sounds for that. Sometimes you'll have sounds for like specific things. Um, did you just did you just spoil that there was going to be a killer? Well, I mean, well, it's I on think the cover. You spoiled that like a while ago. Yeah. Said a bunch of girls are get get murdered spookily or something funny like that. Yeah, that shows my listening skills now, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I see. So now you notice, like, yeah, like it's got like the soundtrack cue. Now we're trying to find Miss Mary. Where did Miss Mary go? She was just here a minute ago. 
All right, now Maybe. we gotta gotta go find her. And you get free, uh, you get free control to just do whatever you'd like. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much go through the whole mansion. Um, there's locked doors and stuff. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the layout of the mansion is different every time, which is kind of like an interesting thing to keep it. Oh, um, that's pretty cool. It. Yeah. So, you know, did, uh, did I read that it had nine endings, actually? Yes, it's got nine different endings. Despite being a short game, I believe, correct? Yeah, it's about, I think uh, most people could probably finish it in like an hour or two. Wow. But it's interesting that they went that route instead of going for like a full eight hour linear experience. Um, right. Because obviously, like horror, it's easier to like pace it, um, get those jump scares in there, but they opted in for like this more of like a loose, randomly generated kind of like layout and playing it multiple times, right? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if Miss Mary is in here. Oh. But he's gone. It'd be funny if they came out behind those two chairs out of literally nowhere. <laughs> oh, Psych. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> I was expecting that, actually. I don't know why. I feel like you're, you've been trained by modern movies because they don't, <laughs> they don't like to... Um, let any build up happen so like if you, you know you hear a scream then like it's got to have an immediate payoff sure yeah i, th I think they kind of got away from the old horror f formula there it was all building 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 and the to the that final like yeah, the omen the classic horror yeah. film and so much it seems so slow at the beginning and then once it got going oh yeah that amazing. that ending with um in the cemetery, right? Well, that's not the ending, ending, but um. Well, that was a big part. That's, that's a like big climax, part. I think. I think the ending, like at the original version, I I didn't see the remake, but the original one, I think, was in a, a church. Oh, I didn't even know there was a remake. That's interesting. Yeah, it came out on June sixth, two thousand six. Oh, nice. It was actually not really a terrible film, I, I felt. Uh, it was some, some decent, you know, some decent pieces of it. But, you know, nothing compares to the original, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's only missing Gregory Peck. Yeah, it's a <laughs> huge loss. I mean, he was amazing. <laughs> so, you didn't, so you can get anything up the stairs, huh? No, it's just kind of a little of scare, I guess. Um, it's one that's one criticism I have of this game is that the the movement is not great. You know, it's, it's it plays like a old school adventure game, but on the Nintendo, on the Super Nintendo sure. rather. So um, it doesn't feel super great. You know, having well, I believe that looks like that. Isn't another unique piece that you can't fight back, which is some might think was something new that may have happened recently, you know, uh, kind of in the amnesia, dark descent or something, you know, in that vein. Right. Yeah. And we're going to we're going to get we're going to see that once um, we get a little bit further in. But yeah, like there's no actual you there is a kind of combat, but you're not actively damaging your attacker right it's just you your best defense is fleeing and i i think it's cool because it, it really plays into the fact that you know you you are like this orphaned girl you're not like gruff mick marine dude who's gonna be <laughs> kicking asses right so um it plays very well into the theme of the game there's also this really cool mechanic that let me see if we can make it happen so if you notice uh, in the bottom left corner of the screen, you see her portrait with like uh, the yellow around it. That's um, her fear status. And um, once she sees scary things or like sees the killer, it uh, decreases. And uh, if you want to 
and you know fill it back up you just wait a moment and she like meditates or something which is kind of an interesting hmm. mechanic that you're not finding help yeah, around the world that's kind of cool except it's it, i guess it kind of seems like the almost the entirety of this is you're walking or sitting sure. right so far right and you know back in the day this would have been totally acceptable but it does kind of like grind the game to a halt like while you're yeah. waiting for that to happen she What's... goes all Geralt of Rivia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us that uh, that meditation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need to uh, get I'll my... I'll meditate uh... for five hours in <laughs> 2.3 seconds. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. I always loved... I, I was kind of bummed that they didn't do the, uh, the visual for that in The Witcher 3. Where it just like... I think in The Witcher 2 it spins around him and you see yeah, the day-night yeah, cycle a... happen. That was right. Oh yeah, that would be cool. I hadn't gotten a chance to play the second one. I've seen some gameplay online, but never got a chance to personally play it. I hear good things, of course. Obviously, CD Projekt oh, Red. Yeah. So. yeah, the second one was really, really good. It's a it's a really great length too, because I think it's only about like six to eight hours. So, it, like compared to the other games, it's like very well paced. <laughs> yeah, maybe The Witcher Three was too expansive, even. For as amazing as it was, no, I, th I think it's got its place. Um, it's just The Witcher Two is like a very tight experience, which is a nice, nice variation. I guess they tried a few different things, which you have to give them credit for. So yeah, you know, in classic adventure game, you know, formula, you're kind of like hunting around the screen looking for items. <laughs> yeah, just the clickables. Yeah, so we, we picked up a perfume bottle. I don't know exactly what that is. Um, yeah, I noticed for... earlier you picked up a rock. Do you got, <laughs> do you got like an inventory? Yeah, so oh, if you, you hold down... So oh, here's another thing. So you can run by pushing the triggers in their different directions, right? And you, and you stop by pressing the topmost button, face button. And then to open your inventory, you have to hold down... A, I believe, and then select the thing. You can make your rock smell smell better with the perfume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. That's one it. handsome rock. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So know. really, uh, what do we know? What does she know so far? What does our, uh, you know, what is our protagonist? What has she found out? I think. All she knows is that she's at this orphanage, and her friends are missing. Brightening. Now we're hearing like some water dripping. Oh, so that's one thing. Um, the unfortunately, um, due to the emulation, this like a lot of visual errors happening in this room. But I think it kind of makes it look a Even little better. scarier. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. Ahead of its time. So let's go. Yeah. Let's go investigate what's going on in the shower. Oh, is that a pumpkin? No, it's pumpkin. Laura. Uh oh. I've seen this movie. Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does kind of look like the Scarface villain from Batman. He also feels like he's a really short guy pissed off from 1776. Yeah. <laughs> well, this that is. Was Sween that was Sweeney Todd. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. The Demon Barber of Seville. But yeah, now that it's we're right. now that we're um, being chased by him, um, pretty much our only options are to like run and hide, find a safe spot. What are those? You know, not to spoil what's ahead, but you know, is it just pretty much one type of place that you can hide in, or are we are we talking about some different? Uh, yeah. So like, unlike unlike the uh, the PlayStation 
um, game. There's actually, there's like multiple places you can hide. Oh. Let's see what, look out one of these windows and see what's happening. Oh, fell. Um, but yeah, there's multiple places you can hide. Sometimes it's a room, sometimes, um, will you like crawl under something at one point too? We might be... We might be stuck. Is that like... Is that like 80s music that was playing in the background? Yeah. It sounded, it sounded like it. I guess I already broke the, uh, you know, kid friendly with the whole f bomb at the start. Oh, sorry, <laughs> folks. Sorry about that, folks. So, no. let me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty brutal because uh, he, we didn't see him like behind us at all, and then he just appeared in the doorway. Thankfully, though, the the uh, checkpoints are pretty, um, pretty generous. You're not losing too much progress. They probably oh. did quite a bit of testing. Got a little food <laughs> Except that we got stuck right there. Oh, no. Awesome. Let's I see. I love the old checkpoints. <laughs> Let's, uh, so... Oh, if... you... <laughs> oh sorry, go ahead. You were going to sing it praises on the checkpoint system, and now... I know. Be... I know. It was great. Great timing, huh? All right, welcome back. Uh, we just uh, loaded up a safe state because we, <laughs> just as I was like praising the checkpoint system, immediately got caught in a uh, a no win situation. So that's what you do, you know. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So we're about we haven't really gotten much further in the game. Um, we're no longer being chased by a scissor man though at the moment. Scissors is why why. Did they choose scissors, do you think? Um, I don't know. I haven't played through these games all the way through yet. But I'm sure it's it will be revealed. I mean, it's it's actually... Um, the inspiration initially came from this movie called The Burning Man, which I'm sure no one has ever heard of. But uh, in the video description, I'll leave a... Um, leave a uh, link to the trailer but basically it's like friday the 13th with a uh a killer who uses giant like garden shears so mm. they they took a lot of phenomena and then the burning man are both like huge inspirations for this game okay yeah well that's cool um yeah so while we're walking up these stairs slowly, some more fun facts about this game. Um, yeah, apparently Bob Vila is an inspiration too. <laughs> uh, so this wasn't their first. He, this wasn't a uh, human's first um, horror game. They actually made one before called Laplace Noma, I believe. I might have mispronounced that, but uh, it's a uh, an RPG for the NES and players go around town collecting items and stuff to battle um, a very like Lovecraftian-esque monster in the mansion, mm. in the town mansion. It sounds kind of interesting. It might be a game we check out in one of our streams later on. But, uh... Uh, oh, I love Lovecraft. Do you love 8-bit uh, Lovecraft? 8-bit <laughs> Japanese Lovecraft? Probably. <laughs> like... Lovecraft uh, themes is like my uh, le the whole Elder Tour. Absolutely love. It is a it is an excellent excellent genre. I don't, I don't even know if it's a genre, but just that whole all those stories and cult. stuff are awesome. It's like a cult following now. I feel like. So this is this is actually one of the hiding places. Um, once you for some reason once you get behind this crate. Scissor Man will no longer chase you. Hmm. Why do you think that is? I don't know. He must have had a bad experience with that 
<laughs> Probably because crate beats scissors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. I think you got it. Um, some more interesting trivia about the game. Um, oh, what are we going to get here? There's some clothes in here. What kind of clothes are these? Pull out a bondage costume. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got the next best thing. This a black like a, robe. An eyes wide shut robe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom Cruise, you sick man. That yeah, was actually <laughs> a documentary. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, so this game was um, also... Let me see how to, how to phrase this. Apparently, the inspiration, or not the inspiration, but how this game started development was that there was a company wide um, competition for everybody um, working on the game to, or working um, to like pitch their own ideas. And um, because they were like running out of ideas or something like that, like they, they needed something original. And uh, the director, um, oh, his name totally escapes me right now, um, but I believe it's Miyafune. He pitched this game and it won by like a huge margin. So, oh, wow. He got a pool stick out and broke it over his knee and he said, We're going to have tryouts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right so we got a key to west wing which i think is that a door all the way on the right side um in the first screen i want to say it might be over here who knows martin sheen's office <laughs> <laughs> So is that robe following you, or is that attached to your cursor? Yeah, this is just like a selected item. It's the spooky robe. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this game is scary. <laughs> so let's see. I'm kind of worried right now because the, the fear, or your health bar basically, is um, all the way low right now. So if I run into Scissor Man, he'll instant kill me. So oh, let's no. just hope that doesn't happen. I feel like whoever created the running animation had to do a boatload of wind sprints, you know, like suicides. You can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nightmare. Um. Yeah. So. Well, can't you just sit down to to regain your? I, level or whatever it is. We can, but for the interest of our audience, I'm trying to um, keep it rolling. I don't think everybody wants to watch us sit down. Sometimes everyone likes to watch a girl that's terrified sit down. <laughs> it's true. And relieve some tension. Oh, we don't it's want locked. Them to be scared. Kick that, kick that in. You know, I mean, why not, right? I mean. What's a? She should yeah, be so I mean, scared she's, that she's gonna bust it down. Yeah, she's got think. a rock. Yeah. Fly, yeah, and it has perfume all over it, so you know that thing's gonna bust. <laughs> it. So now we're at the we're at the um. Ooh, I wonder if that's. You think she'd like want to pick something like that up, right? A frying pan. Yeah. <laughs> you can um, club death a scissor that. man with a frying pan. Yeah, I mean, he's only like, he, he's got like a child's stature. I'm sure he's not that physically tough. <laughs> now you will pray to the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Lord, make this ham sandwich taste better than ever before. <laughs> so what is going on? Oh, yeah, you're trying to get the fear back. Yeah. You're trying to the calm her down. Of her. Calendar, the day today is marked. Ominous. Very ominous. <laughs> and a little pair of scissors are drawn. <laughs> it's marked with scissors. <laughs> with a smiley face. <laughs> so let's see what's in this uh, refrigerator here. Big one. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> oh no. Not horse flies. <laughs> Doesn't that music that remind you guys of uh, Psycho? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good movie. There's actually a lot of the music is very like like I'd never thought about that, but that sounds very much like Psycho. But the um the initial theme sounds very much like um the theme to Suspiria. Not like directly, but just like in its texture. So it's kind of interesting that they just kind of they wore all of those um, inspirations on their sleeve. Put it all out there. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's uh, explore a little bit further. So, up oh, classic. I like let's, this room a lot. Let's just uh, leave all this behind. Get out of here. Oh, nice. Uh, too bad Scissor Man wasn't in the car. Right. <laughs> in the back seat. Always check the back seat. <laughs> and hanging from the rear view mirror was a <laughs> pair of scissors. Oh. <laughs> here we go. We got a car key. Uh, now let's really it? get out of here. I, it was over here in this crate, I think. Or behind <laughs> the car. Who the hell put it over there? The keys aren't here. I thought we just picked up the keys. Oh, we must have to... Just did too. We must have to like use it on the car. Uh, Classic uh, adventure game. <laughs> I can get out of here with this car. <laughs> All right, Seems let's go. logical. But gotta stay yeah. behind. Uh, what? Yeah, she's a selfless. She's, she's a selfless uh, heroine. She's got to find out what happened. Help everybody well, else out. Pick up that shovel, selfless heroine. Yeah, and watch out behind that hay. Oh. Sounds like there's a siren. Yeah, just outside. Sorry about that, beaver. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> it's life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... So yeah, I've something something safer. because we uh this state this save state is uh further into the game, but um uh where we were before we loaded up the save state, um you basically see like all the other girls get murdered. Uh, one of them gets thrown out of a window. Uh, I believe another one falls from like the ceiling and gets like pinned by a chandelier. So it's kind of really? it's kind of crazy that they had like this like that level of violence in this era on this console considering yeah, that Nintendo crazy. had a Nintendo had to give the thumbs up on everything. Well, I guess since it's not in the video, it'll leave the uh people at home with something to go uh, want to play the game for. Yeah, exactly. So this isn't this isn't like a thorough um playthrough of this game. There's plenty of other uh playthroughs of this game online that you can find. Um, I also recommend just playing it. It's kind of like a fun throwback, and it's not too difficult. It's definitely um, a little tedious how slow you walk and stuff, but um, you know it's only two hours long, and I think you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it in that time. So yeah, let's uh, let's see if this key works on this door real quick. Oh, we actually used it before. But, uh, okay, well, I think that's a good place to call it. Um, unless you guys have, like, any other final thoughts on the game that you want to share. Brian, do you have anything? Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it got me interested to play uh, some, some of the older horror mo uh, games and actually to watch some of the older horror movies. Uh, you mentioned earlier just the footsteps, no ambient sound. Like sometimes that's a really cool effect. Like right. just having nothing but the footsteps, it's very unnerving. I agree. Uh, yeah, 
I'm gonna have to check this out. This this looks really cool. And I think I think uh, Brandon, you brought up an interesting point earlier about how like um, a lot of games now, you know, newer games get credit for doing innovative things when it, you know, they were already there in games like this, such as you know, not sure. having a combat experience, focusing more on like, f you know, flight, running and hiding, yeah, and um, and it's also interesting that this game isn't like purely like a um. It's not like Slenderman where you're just constantly being chased. Some of the scares come from just like uh, psychological stuff, like the roaches in that in that refrigerator. So it's it's always it's this will be like a recurring theme uh, while we play a lot of these older games. But it's always interesting to see like developers and creators like you know really try and like shoot past what the medium allows in creating like a you know. A whole experience like a complete horror experience you know yeah it's something new right i you know try to push push the boundaries of what's coming you know before us or before you know yeah and especially since they didn't have any baggage so like there wasn't any kind of template you know this was only a couple of years after alone in the dark so it wasn't like that was really cemented i don't i think a resident evil was 96 right yeah yeah i think i think you're right so mm -hmm. th this was all like open ground and everybody was just trying to figure out what what it meant to create these kind of experiences yeah i think the game was a lot of fun to see uh and i have to fully agree with ryan you know silence is just as effective if not more effective at times than you know hearing some other kind of ambient or thematic track in the background so yeah it was really fun to see you know another style of game and i'm excited to see what you come up with for us in the future yeah well uh thank you guys for joining us um this will be um well we're gonna take another rest <laughs> um so yeah, she you got guys... tired <laughs> all uh, that running takes it out of you yeah, it does. <laughs> so uh, while we wait for uh, Jennifer to relax a little bit, I'll just uh, let everybody know that, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be a bi-weekly uh, video series that we do. Um, so next week we're going to do a live stream uh, doing playing a bunch of different games. But the week after that, we will have our next game. Um, and if you stay tuned after this, uh, you'll see a slight teaser for it. Besides that, uh, this is kind of like a new series for us. We're workshopping it, so we'd love to hear any kind of feedback, suggestions, suggestions for games for the future, anything or everything that you guys have to say. Also, make sure to comment with the uh, your guesses for what the next Let's Play is going to be. Uh, the first person to get it right will be given a shout-out in the next episode. Do you guys have anything you want to plug? Where can we find you on social media and stuff? Brandon, yeah. do you uh, do you want to shout out on anything? I mean, not, nothing uh, really personally that, you know, it's all really mostly about Rogue Raven. You know, if you find us on Twitter at Rogue Raven LLC and same thing goes for Facebook. Uh, if you'd like to check us out on LinkedIn as well, I, I think there's a decent following on my personal uh, LinkedIn there at Brandon Lutz. That's L-U-T-Z, but... You know, we'd really like to have anybody check us out on social media, so that's where you're, that's where it is. Uh, really, I mean, uh, they could check out uh, my art station. Name is Ryan Niebla. That's N-I-E-B-L-A. Um, I got an art station up on YouTube. I got a demo reel. Um, look me up on LinkedIn. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And same goes for me. Uh, you guys can find me at uh, C Smithereen on Twitter. But yeah, uh, thank you everybody for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Caleb. Yeah, thanks, man. On my door, a dull brass plate says Private Detective. What I was asked to do was visit a property called Dersetto. The former owner of Dorsetto had hanged himself in the loft. I've been reading up on the history of the old house. It's the kind of place ghosts run away from in terror. Grisly murders, curses, lunacy. Luckily, devil worship makes me smile. So, this is my idea of a paid vacation. <laughs>